Psalm 118, verses 24 through 26 say this. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. O Lord, do save, we beseech you. O Lord, we beseech you, do send prosperity. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We have blessed you from the house of the Lord. When it says, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, I need to explain that a minute. To come in the name of the Lord means to come representing the character of God, saying the things that God says, and doing the things that God does. And this was a psalm that was the last of the six Hallel Psalms. It was something that describes the joy of returning from exile. It actually was sung at the time toward the end of Daniel's life when a remnant of about 40,000 Jews returned from Babylon to Jerusalem. And they were expressing praise to God for the fact that he's showing favor to them and blessing them. This psalm was also sung during Passion Week as the Jews would make their way to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. In fact, there's actually a record of the Jews singing it. Here it is in Mark 11:9. although there's several other passages. Those who went in front and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And they had they grabbed branches and cloaks and laid them down as a way of honoring this individual who was riding on a donkey. The people are really belting it out as Jesus enters the city. Something is up. What is going on here? Here's the Zechariah connection. Zechariah 9.9. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout in triumph, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation, humble and mounted on a donkey, even on a colt, the foal of a donkey. So when Jesus arrived in Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, this day, fulfilling Zechariah 9.9, the crowds started singing from Psalm 118, verse 26. And they were captivated by the prospect of a change in their fortunes, something getting better from darkness going to light. Now, there were some in Jerusalem who were asking, what's, what's going on? <laughs> and in Matthew 21, 11, we read the explanation of the crowds who were celebrating. They said, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. Matthew 21, 11. Jesus made his way to the temple. He rode the donkey at some point, dismounted, and walked into the temple precincts. And then did something quite striking. He cleansed the temple. There were a number of individuals in the temple who were making obscene profits by cheating the people. And Jesus came in and overturned the tables and drove them out. Then he healed the blind and the lame. Now the religious leaders who were watching all of this, this procession and then the deeds that he was doing, they were not excited about it, and they became indignant, according to Matthew. As the day came to a close, Jesus left Jerusalem, and he left to the east, went across the Kidron Valley, up the Mount of Olives, and then down the east slope to a village, Bethany, where he seems to have resided. He didn't stay in Jerusalem each night. And I can't say for sure, but I think that it is possible that the passage I'm about to read to you is something that Jesus may have uttered as he would leave Bethany on Wednesday and he came and crested the Mount of Olives and there in the morning light he would see the city of Jerusalem to the west of him. And he quoted Psalm 118, 26 once more. But this was quite a contrast. The crowds were singing it with joy and excitement. But this reads and sounds like a lament. Here's what he said. He's crested the hill. He's looking at the city. 
And he says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, who kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to her. How often I've wanted to gather your children together the way a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. And you were unwilling. Behold, your house is being left to you desolate, for I say to you, from now on, you will not see me until you say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And there he's quoting Psalm 118. Now, (laughs) Jesus is saying, you're not going to see me until you sing Psalm 118, verse 26. But they just did. What's going on here? The key is found in verses 37 and 38, 39. Uh, First, we read about Israel's track record. Uh, Countless times they have blown it. They killed prophets. They stoned those who were sent to them, which is a way of saying, Jesus, Lord, whatever you're bringing, we don't want it. Whatever you want to tell us, we're not interested. Numerous times, and, and the word "thelo," which is the Greek word translated I wish or I want, is used in the present. Numerous times Jesus wanted to gather them together under his wing, but they were not willing. And it's the same word, I wanted, but you didn't want. There's no conclusion that can be reached but this. Even though they sang Psalm 118, verse 26, as Jesus entered the city, they did not, as a nation, and certainly not their leaders, view Jesus as a blessing, but a problem to be dealt with. He's someone who, we need to get rid of him. And because of this, they missed an opportunity to experience what is promised in Psalm 118, to actually sing a song of victory as they were gathered like chicks to nestle under his wing. Jesus is drawing a contrast between between what happened on Palm Sunday and what is going to happen on another day, yet future. Unlike the religious leaders who viewed Jesus as a threat, a tomorrow people will view him as a blessing. They will say, what a blessing that Jesus is coming. The one who has the very character of God, the one who speaks what God says, and who does the works of God, including saving lost people. That future people will celebrate the coming of Jesus as a true gift from God, and their joy will be boundless and real. They will view Jesus as the one who provides every blessing that's spelled out in Psalm 118. That entire psalm is going to be experienced in the future. Here are just some of the words from Psalm 118, but the whole psalm is worth your reading. The Lord is my strength and my song. He has become my salvation. I will not die, but live and tell of the works of the Lord. Did you get what's going on there? What they're saying is, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, who is the source of my strength, who's the one who gives me a reason to sing. He's the one who has become my basis of salvation. I won't die. I will live and tell of the works of the Lord. That's who Jesus is, our salvation. That's who Jesus is, our strength, and the one who gives us a reason to sing. So what about you? You don't have to wait for that future day. You can sing this song now. You can sing, blessed is the Lord who is my salvation. I will not die. My strength, my reason for singing. On Palm Sunday, some of the reactions, some were in doubt. Well, who who is he? I don't know. Some said, well, he's a prophet. He's a great religious leader. Some were indignant and saying, he's someone to avoid. But we know. He is the source of our salvation, the reason for singing, the source of our strength, and we will not die. Because Jesus walked from the temple and eventually walked to Calvary and died on a cross 
for you and for me. Well, does that mean everybody's good? No. A gift doesn't do you any good unless you unwrap it. The gift has been prepared and wrapped. It's there. But it remains for us to unwrap it. Well, how do you unwrap it, Jim? It's very simple. You simply say, as a transaction of the heart, God, I am a sinner, and I deserve eternal separation from you. But I also know that Jesus died on the cross in my place, which means that I can enjoy eternity with you because of what he has done, and I am choosing to name him as my Savior, to name him as my Lord, and to say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. You can do that right now. I'm going to pray in just a moment, and I'll pray in a way where you can actually say, I want Jesus to be my salvation. Let's pray. If you'd like to, you can pray a prayer like this. Jesus, I am a sinner. I have done things that are wrong. And I deserve eternal separation from you. But you, Father, sent your only son, Jesus, to die in my place. And I believe that and am trusting Jesus as my Savior and the one for whose pleasure I will live from this day forward. Father, for all of us in this room, may we live lives that are all and only about you. May we be those who are able to say the character of God, the accomplishments of God, the things that God says, those are the greatest gifts ever given, and they have been given to me. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.